Welcome to Wildly Capable with Kate, a podcast made for those looking to unleash their wildest capabilities. I'm your host, Kate DeRocher, a dating, relationship, and self-worth coach on a mission to help people build better relationships, starting with the one they have with themselves. In each episode, we'll dig deep, turn inwards, and embark on a transformative journey. Together, we'll break free from unhealthy patterns, rip through self-limiting beliefs, heal past wounds, and build unwavering self-worth, all to create healthier relationships as a result. Get ready to explore the wild, untapped potential within you. Are you ready to see just how wildly capable you are? Subscribe now and join us on this empowering adventure. Remember, your wildest capabilities await. Okay, you guys, today's podcast message is important. And if you are not watching on YouTube, which you probably aren't because nobody really watches these videos, but I'm going to make them anyway, I just slid into my chair for dramatic effect before coming on camera. So just trying to get you guys' attention so you can understand that what I want to share today is something that I think a lot of people, especially people who are struggling with dating, need to hear. Okay. Now let me reposition myself and unbutton my pants because honestly, sitting down there way too tight. But anyway, hello everybody. Welcome back to Wildly Capable with Kate. Now I have a dog hair on my face because I have two dogs. Okay, focusing. I'm focusing. I've had too much coffee. Anyway, I'm so happy that you guys are here. Like I said, this is Wildly Capable with Kate and I am your podcast host, Kate DeRocher. I'm a dating, relationship, and self-worth coach and speaker who's on a mission to help you build better relationships, starting first with the one that you have with yourself. I just kicked the camera as I repositioned. I'm unhinged today, you guys. We'll see if I leave any of this in the episode. Probably will. Oops, ruined my hair. Okay. (laughs) Please hold. Okay. Again, for anybody not watching the podcast, I'm now trying to fix my hair and get situated because I'm a little bit all over the place right now. Okay, I feel good. Okay, back to it. Before I dive into today's message, I want to share with you all some very exciting news. So I am hosting my first ever women's retreat this Labor Day weekend in Dripping Springs, Texas. That's August 30th through September 2nd. I purposely planned it over Labor Day so that way anybody who works has a little bit more flexibility to travel. And it's in a really beautiful part of Texas, just about 30 minutes outside of Austin. Absolutely stunning hill country. Um, The Airbnb is so luxurious. I couldn't believe that I snagged it. It overlooks the wide open space in Texas. And it's going to be an incredible, incredible weekend filled with healing and growth. The whole weekend is designed to help any gals who join step into their wild woman. I came up with this idea after reading the book, Women Who Run With Wolves, and even have a tattoo on my arm. There you go. If you're watching, you can see the tattoo after the book because it was so impactful to me. The idea of stepping into your wild woman is owning your power and releasing the old hurts and pains and wounds that are weighing you down so you can face your future with strength and grace. And I want to help any woman listening to this do exactly that. So if you are interested, head to my brand new website, coachkaterocher.com, go to the tab that says events, and you can sign up there. Right now, until June 1st, I'm running an early bird special. So it is 10% off. $2,222 total angel number. Just had to throw that in there. And if you are listening to this podcast, you get an extra special discount. If you use code retreat when signing up for it, you will get another 10% off on top of that. I only have seven more spots available. So snag your spot. Now the weekend is going to be filled with so many activities. We're going horseback riding, We're doing a private yoga session, a sound bath. There's going to be a farm to table chef there to cook all your meals all weekend. It's just going to be incredible. I have a lot of surprises up my sleeve. We're going to do a cacao and stargazing ceremony. We're going to do a little bit of art therapy. And then of course, there'll be workshops and intensives all around building better relationships 
starting first with the way you love and treat yourself. So please, if you are listening to this and this is calling to you even in the slightest, I would encourage you to sign up. It's a beautiful way to invest in yourself and in your future, and it would be such an honor to have you there. If you have any questions, reach out to me over Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Coach Kate DeRocher. We can talk through any of your concerns, any travel questions. I can help set you up with a payment plan, whatever you need. Just reach out to me with any questions you may have. I would love to see you this Labor Day weekend in Texas for the Wildly Capable Women's Retreat. All right, now to the show. Today's episode is all about why your dating life sucks. Yes, I'm going to be very blunt because I know a lot of people listening to this are really struggling when it comes to finding healthy matches and having a fulfilling, happy, fun dating life. So many people, and I know this because I talk to them every day, share with me that dating is just challenging. It's exhausting. They don't want to go on dates. Or if they are committed to the dating process, they know that they want to find their person. So they keep putting themselves out there. They're met with people who either just aren't able to step up to the plate or who they aren't aligned with or who aren't looking for the same thing that they are. And so people end up feeling exhausted and, you know, losing hope over and over again through the dating process. So if this is resonating with you, if I'm talking to you, this episode is for you. I'm going to break down why I think so many people struggle with dating today, and I'm going to give you the flip side of how there are also so many people who are incredible at dating and who have formed really healthy, long-lasting relationships so you can see how you can feel empowered to change anything within your dating life that isn't working. So first, let me break down why your dating life probably, potentially, maybe sucking a little bit right now. To do that, I'm going to break down trends and habits that I see in people who have unsuccessful dating lives. I'm gonna go into depth with each one so you can understand if that's you or if it's not. And if it is you, I will help you break all of those things. The first trait that I see in people who have difficulty with dating is that they are stuck repeating old patterns. You likely aren't very aware of it, but you have patterns. You have patterns in the way that you behave and think and show up that have been formed since you were a little kid. They were formed in your relationships with your early caregivers, with your parents. They were formed throughout middle school, elementary, high school, as you grew up and formed new relationships with friends or with your first boyfriend, or when you were in college and you had your heart broken for the first time. Patterns are formed through so many different circumstances in our lives. And if we don't pause and slow down and do some self-reflection, those patterns can keep us on autopilot and cause your dating life and your relationships to be more difficult than they need to be. These patterns can look like accepting situationships over and over, attracting unhealthy people or matches who just aren't emotionally available or who maybe are worse, have some narcissistic tendencies, um, really mistreat you, maybe can even be abusive and toxic. There are patterns of only going for one type of person, even if that type seems to never be working out for you. There's so many patterns that we have within ourselves that we play out over and over again in our dating lives. They're cyclical. We keep repeating them because we are not aware of them. And we will have a really hard time finding and keeping healthy matches for ourselves if we don't break those patterns, if we don't have some sort of pattern interrupt along the way. We will replay those patterns out of unawareness or often we replay them over and over because we are subconsciously trying to rewrite them. What do I mean by this? I'm going to give you an example in my own life. So when I was 15 to roughly the age of 19, 20, I dated my first boyfriend in high school and a little bit in college. And it was a really unhealthy relationship. Pretty much everything that you could imagine going wrong in a relationship went wrong in that one. Um, It was very toxic. There was a lot of lying, a lot of manipulation, a lot of cheating. And I stayed and I stayed for years. I stayed for five, six years. And part of the reason that I was doing that is because there were patterns formed within me that made me believe that I had to prove something to be lovable. 
that made me believe that I wasn't worthy of love and I had to try harder to get his love and to get him to treat me right. So that was one pattern that I kept playing out in that relationship and kept accepting the absolute worst from him because of it. Another pattern that I ended up replaying over and over in my life was formed because of that relationship, because of my first um, high school, very toxic relationship. So because that situation, that relationship was so horrible, I went on for years. I'm talking between five and 10 years after high school, all the way into college, all the way into post-grad, up until like my mid-20s, even later, attracting the same sort of men that my ex was back in high school. So unhealthy men, men who weren't aware of the way that their own wounds were showing up, men who were like the projects and needed help, men who were traumatized and never had worked through their trauma, men who were emotionally unavailable, men who lied, men who deceived, men who manipulated and cheated on me. I attracted those types of men and replayed those patterns for years and years because I was subconsciously trying to rewrite what happened to me in high school with my first boyfriend. I thought deep down within me, I didn't know I was thinking this, but it was somewhere deep inside me. I thought that if I could get one of these other not so amazing men to treat me right, then that means that the trauma I experienced with my first boyfriend wasn't actually my story, that that wasn't all I was going to have for the rest of my life. I was kind of trying to take control of the past and rewrite it and make myself feel better for my present and my future. And in reality, all I was doing was creating my past over and over and over again, and I just wasn't aware of it. So patterns keep replaying until we pay attention to them. And I have seen with so many people, and obviously in my own life, how those patterns that we don't pay attention to, those patterns that we don't heal and break, keep us stuck in dead-end, unhealthy, unfulfilling dating cycles, or even worse, unhealthy relationships. So. If you're listening to this and you know that you have some things in your past that have hurt you or you have turned into a certain type of person because of relationships you had with your caregivers, anything like that, if this is resonating, I need you to pause pause this podcast and sit with yourself, ask yourself what those patterns are, ask yourself how they're showing up still today, even though you're an adult and you're far removed from those situations, and then pay attention to them. Give them the attention that they are begging you to give to them so you can start to release any emotions, any feelings that are still harbored within you to be able to move past those patterns and not keep repeating them in your dating life today. Pause, reflect, and release. Another pattern that I see all the time is going for the same type of person over and over and over, even though that specific type of person obviously isn't working out for you. I have a friend who always goes for the moody, artsy type, and I get it. Like, they're cool, they're edgy, they're intelligent. But that type, and this is a generalization, very big generalization, a lot of times that type that she was attracting and she was going for, they were not ready for a relationship. They were not ready for commitment. They were still in their struggling artist phase, and they just wanted to, like, kind of, like, be in it. And they couldn't think of anything else. They couldn't think of anyone else because they were so focused on themselves. They were not emotionally available. I've seen that play out in so many different ways with women and with men who keep going for the same types of women and men. They have, they have a type that they constantly go for that doesn't work for them. Once they break that type and they go for somebody who's maybe a little bit different than what they're used to, a lot of times I see that working well. I see a lot of success in that. So that's another pattern that people play out and that you can become aware of and try to break starting right now. The first step in breaking patterns is becoming aware of them. So just sit with yourself a little bit, meditate on this a little bit, see what comes up, be really honest with yourself, embrace that shadow side of yourself that you're probably trying to keep hidden. And then once you identify the patterns that are swimming around inside of you and that you keep repeating in your life, then you can start to pay attention and break them and heal them. All right, next up, a trait that I see in people who really struggle with dating is having an unhealthy mindset around dating. I have met so many women, and I've also done this in my own life, who constantly talk negatively about the men in this world. They constantly are 
thinking that men are just the worst and that there are no good guys left and that even the good guys turn out to be bad guys and they cheat on their wives and all these terrible things. They've seen it happen either in their own lives or in the lives of people that they know. And then they decide that that is the truth. That is the reality for every man. And it's not just women who do this. It's also men who do this. Men think that women are only out for money, that women just want things from them. They create unhealthy thoughts and then mindsets as well. They do it just as much as women do. And whether you believe it or not, your thoughts shape your reality. So the way that you think, the way that you speak to yourself, the way that you talk to yourself, that creates what you will see in front of you. That creates what will be around you in your life. If you are constantly thinking that there are only bad men left, you will only attract bad men because you are so focused on that. And I know this speaking from experience. Like I just told you guys, I went through years and years of dating unhealthy men. And because I had evidence from my first boyfriend that there were bad men out there, I created a narrative. I created a mindset within me that there were only bad men. And then for years, I attracted them. I created that for myself. It wasn't until I finally took a step back and said, oh my gosh, the way I am viewing men and dating in the world around me and other people is so unhealthy and started to control my thoughts, started to rewrite my thoughts, that things changed for me. I had to take control of my mindset. I had to rewrite the narrative that I was so stuck on believing in order to attract and create something different for myself. So I became that friend and I think I, you know, annoyed the crap out of my friends, but I became the person who anytime one of my girlfriends would talk negatively about a guy or about just men in general or about her um, feelings around dating, I would be like, whoa, 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 you guys, let's, let's change this talk. Let's talk positively. Let's just, even though we feel a little bit delulu, let's pretend like there are only amazing men in this world around us. In fact, I even started doing that within myself. I would repeat to myself over and over and over again. I'm talking like all day as I was driving or when I was showering. I just repeated constantly in my head this phrase. I would say, I only attract good and genuine men and women into my life. I was also struggling with creating healthy female friendships. So I threw the women in there too. But I believe that it was taking my thoughts captive and rewriting them changing my mindset that really opened me up and made me ready for the right person for me, for Bobby, for the man that I'm with now, a healthy man, one of the first healthy men that I've been with. So your mindset, pay attention to the thoughts you are telling yourself. If they are negative, if they are harmful, if they are degrading of yourself or other people, that is going to affect your dating life. It is going to change the type of person that you bring into your life. It's going to change the way that you view anybody you go on a date with. You have to work on your mindset. You have to change it to be something positive. And when you do, even if it feels a little bit fake at first, I promise you that that's what you're going to start creating in your life. And you can do this for every factor of your life, not just with dating. You can do it with friendships. You can do it with career. You can do it with family relationships. You can do it with your money mindset, everything. If you are speaking negatively over and over and over, either outwardly, like you're actually saying negative things to other people, or you're saying it within yourself and your thoughts, I promise you that that's the reality you're going to create. So take control of your thoughts. You are not just a passive player in your life you actually do have power to change these things. And I'm not sharing any of this with any of you guys to make you feel like it's your fault. I don't want you to feel bad or to feel like you are blamed for your difficult dating experiences. I am sharing all of these things with you so you can feel empowered. And so you can go out after listening to this podcast, go out into the world, out onto the dating apps, go on dates, feeling like a different person, taking control of your story. You can rewrite your love and relationship and dating story. And you can start to do that by changing your mindset. So that's the second trait that I see in people who have difficult, unhealthy, dead end relationship and dating stories. They are on autopilot when it comes to their patterns and their mindsets, mindset being the second thing. 
And if they don't change it, they will never experience anything different. So just start to pay attention to the way that you think, the words that you say within your head, the story that you're telling yourself. And if it is negative, if it's constantly belittling other men or women or just the dating experience in general, dating as a society today, if you were thinking about all of that negatively, then it's time to heal those thoughts. And I understand. I understand why you think them. I know that you've probably had bad experiences in the past that have given you evidence to believe that the negative thoughts you're thinking are correct. I know that you've probably seen other people be hurt in dating and relationships and engagement and marriage. I know you've seen that. I know you've heard those stories. So you have plenty of evidence to believe that those negative things that you are believing that you're telling yourself are reality, that they're the truth, that they are set in stone, but they're not. They are not. Just because one person had a difficult experience doesn't mean that that's all that exists. I promise you. I know this speaking from experience. I keep speaking from experience because I've been there. I've done all of this, you guys. That's why I know all of this to be true. I'm speaking from experience because I spent years and years thinking men were the worst. Dating was awful. I was never going to find my person. And when I took control, when I took my thoughts captive, that's when I started to see changes in my life. So take some time, figure out what you're thinking, what's going on in your brain, and start to replace it with positive, healthy, good thoughts. The next characteristic that I see in people who have just sucky, terrible dating lives is that they have old wounds that are holding them back. Whatever you don't heal, whatever you don't feel, you will bring into your next relationship no matter what. Relationships bring out our old, unhealed wounds 10 times more than just a normal friendship or any other relationship would. So if you don't face those wounds, they will keep coming up. They will keep causing you to play out the same patterns until you deal with them. You need to process, feel, and release old wounds so you can let go of the patterns that those wounds are creating, the mindsets that those wounds are creating, and not keep, keep creating the same sorts of relationships and situations for yourself or letting those hurts hold you back from even being open to love and accepting healthy love. You need to heal those wounds to create a healthy love story for yourself. And here's the thing. When you do find a healthy partner, when you are in a safe, secure relationship, those old wounds will fall away so much more than they will when you are just doing it alone. Yes, you can heal so much of yourself alone. I'm not saying that getting married or being in a partnership is right for everybody, but I do know that in my own life, I did a lot of healing work before I met Bobby. But the intensive healing work that was still left over that I still needed to do happened within my relationship. And I'm fortunate enough that the relationship, even though it had its ups and downs, we even broke up at one point, outside of those things, the struggles that every relationship comes with, it was a healthy and is a healthy relationship. And since it is healthy and since I know he's not going anywhere, I have the freedom and the safety to heal my old wounds but I would not have even found Bobby or attracted him or created and kept this relationship had I not started to do that healing work on my old past experiences prior to meeting him. So you have to do both. While you are single and your, your period of singlehood right now, focus on healing. Start releasing those old pains that are holding you back, that are making you believe that you are not worthy of love, that are making you attract the same sort of partner over and over that just isn't working. Start to heal any wound, any hurt that's still inside of you. And be honest with yourself because we all have them. Even those of us who have done, um, been on like a healing journey for a long time, there's still more that needs to be released. There always is. New things come up. New things hurt us. People say things that stick with us. They need to be healed. They need to be felt within our bodies, and then we need to release those emotions outwardly, whether that's through, you know, some sort of like um, artistic expression. You can paint, you can draw, you can do pottery. Maybe it's through um, moving your body, through so physical expression, dance, yoga, working out, anything to just start to get the emotions out, you need to do. If that means going to a sound bath or doing breath work and crying the whole time, please do that. 
if it means sitting in your room and punching a pillow and screaming into the abyss, <laughs> whatever that means, do that too. Just get those emotions out. Because if you don't release the emotions that are coming up as you're processing these hurts, it will stay stuck and it will keep coming up until you release them. So while you are single, start this healing journey and then know that when you are in a relationship, specifically a safe relationship, there will be more work that will need to be done and that's okay and that's beautiful and I'm so excited for you to experience the healing, the immense healing that comes within an amazing relationship. So start to pay attention to your old wounds, anything that has not been felt yet and begin to feel and release it. And then the next trait that I see in people who really struggle with dating is that they play the victim. They go through life and act as though they are always the ones who are hurt. They are always the ones who are wronged. They're always the people who other people belittle and mistreat and abuse. And they believe that just like how um, I was saying we believe this because we have evidence with our mindsets. They believe this because they've probably experienced it a few times in their life. So they have evidence that tells them, you know, I am always wronged. I am always the victim, like poor, poor me. It's not that the reason they have this victim um, mentality is wrong. It, it makes sense why they have it. But continuing to perpetuate the victim mentality will keep you stuck in a victim mode. You will keep attracting people who do mistreat you. And you will keep looking for that mistreatment. So even with people that maybe aren't out to get you, who aren't there to hurt you, you will create a narrative in your head that they are. And you will continue to be the victim because you are creating it for yourself. And I know that's really hard to hear because there are so many of us who truly have been the victim in so many situations, especially when it comes to abuse in any format. You are the victim. But you still get to take control. You get to rewrite that narrative and say, no more. I'm not going to allow that in my life anymore. But if you keep thinking, you know, woe is me, nothing ever works out for me, then it won't. I recently had a situation with somebody who, not somebody I was dating, I'm in a relationship, but, but a friend, a um, business relationship, who when I held her accountable for something that she did that hurt me, she took it extremely personal and saw it as me attacking her and being harsh with her. When in reality, I was being as loving as I could be while being honest. Yes, I did not sugarcoat how I was feeling, but I said it in a very gentle and loving way. And even though I said it in the best way I possibly could, she still heard it as a personal attack. She still took it as if I was after her and trying to hurt her. And that's the last thing I was trying to do. She was stuck in the victim mentality. And since she is, that's what's going to keep happening in her life when it comes to business, friends, family, relationships, until she says, you know what? I actually did do something that created this situation for myself. I can hold myself accountable. I can choose to change this in the future. So I am not saying if you have been victimized in any way in your life, if you've been hurt by other people, that you deserve that. You did not deserve that. But you still can take control and create a different situation, a different outcome, a different life for yourself if you hold yourself accountable for your own role or if you just choose to rewrite that narrative and stop believing that everybody's out to get you. If you have a victim mentality, your dating life is going to be very difficult. I'm just gonna be straight up with you. You need to call yourself out for your own role in things. You need to change those mindsets and you need to allow yourself the space to attract and keep healthy people. So work through that victim mindset if this sounds like it's something you're doing. I did it for years. I did it, um, especially in dating, just believing I would never get somebody who would treat me right. And then for years, I didn't. And I had to take a good hard look at myself and say, okay, there are things that you're doing that are creating these scenarios and these relationships for yourself. How can you change those? How can you heal those? And when I did, again, that's when I saw changes in my life and in my dating story. So pay attention to where you may be playing the victim um, and start to 
not play the victim for lack of a better way to explain it. Just start to take control. Start to hold yourself accountable because you have a say in your story too. All right, everybody, before we continue, before I start to share with you the traits and characteristics that I see in people who have amazing dating lives, amazing relationships, I want to quickly remind you to head to my website, coachkaterosher.com, to sign up for my first ever women's retreat. The Wildly Capable Women's Retreat is going to be held this Labor Day weekend, August 30th through September 2nd in Dripping Springs, Texas. We are going to be doing a lot of work on healing relationships, healing your self-worth, stepping into your wild woman, stepping into your full capabilities, and just becoming the woman that you were always created to be. We're going to go horseback riding. We're going to do yoga. We're going to eat amazing healthy foods. We're going to do a cacao ceremony. We're going to do some art therapy. We're going to do a sound bath. There's just endless things that are going to go on in that weekend. And we have some incredible, incredible, fierce, loving, empowering women who are going to join us. And I would love for you to be one of those women too. There are seven spots left in the retreat. So head to coachkaterosher.com, go to the events page, sign up now, and be sure to use code retreat for an additional 10% off the 10% off that I'm already offering. If you are listening to this podcast, you get an extra special thank you by using code retreat to receive 10% off of the Wildly Capable Women's Retreat. I would love to have you there. Please sign up, use the code, DM me if you have any questions, and I will see you this Labor Day weekend. Okay, before I give you some more tangible tips on how to rewrite your dating story, I just want to rapid fire and share some other things that I see in people whose dating experiences and dating lives just aren't going the way that they want. So here are some trends that I see in my clients, friends, or other people in my life, or even in my own life, that are holding them back from maintaining a long-lasting, healthy relationship. The first one, and it kind of goes into what I was just talking about with the victim mentality, is that they have an inability to hold themselves accountable. They are always blaming the other person, not willing to look at things from a different perspective, having a my way or the highway type of attitude, an inability to say sorry, and an unwillingness to grow. If that sounds like you, that needs to be healed, that needs to be improved if you want to maintain a healthy relationship. Accountability really is everything in a relationship because it's what will create safety and health and help you to learn how to manage conflict and work through problems in a really constructive way. So learn how to hold yourself accountable within your relationships and in every other facet of your life. The next thing that I see holding people back from having a healthy, lasting relationship is that they do not know how to fight right. Actually, hang on one second. I want to show you something. For those of you who are just listening in and not watching the video of this podcast, I just went and grabbed a book called Fight Right. It is by um, Julie Gottman and John Gottman. They are a married couple who have researched relationships for, I don't even know, 40 years, like their whole relationship. So they know a ton about what it takes to maintain and keep a healthy relationship. And one of the biggest things that they talk about throughout all of their work is couples who just simply do not know how to fight in a constructive and healthy way. They do not know how to manage conflict, especially before it gets to the point of becoming something very serious. Learning how to fight, learning how to handle conflict is a skill just like any other skill that you will have to learn how to build in your life. If you run away from conflict, if you don't share your needs or what you're struggling with or what hurt you and instead just try to keep the peace because you're too afraid to bring up conflict, if you do the exact opposite and you are constantly criticizing the other person in a way that's not kind or healthy or you get really explosive in fights, if you talk over the other person, these are all things that can be worked through. There are skills that you can learn to help you manage conflict properly, to help you learn how to fight right, how to fight fair. The couples that make it for the long haul are the couples who know how to fight. Because whether you like it or not, you're going to fight. There's going to be conflict. There's going to be disagreements. There's going to be the need for sacrifices and compromise. And if you do not know how to do that in a healthy, constructive way, your relationship doesn't really stand a great chance at making it through the hard things that life brings life will bring conflict. Life will bring struggles. So you need to know how to handle them in a really just healthy and fair and loving way. 
you have to learn how to fight right. Bobby and I have talked about this pretty openly in our um, duo couples podcast before and just in our social media. But at first in our relationship, we didn't know how to fight right. Bobby needs space and he needs time before he can have a difficult conversation. I'm the opposite. I process very quickly and I want to fight and duke it out right then and there. I want to come to a resolution as quickly as possible. So our styles didn't match each other's. We weren't able to give each other what we both needed. So we had to learn how to fight in a more constructive way. And that looks like allowing Bobby the space he needs to process and then have the conversation at a little bit of a later time. And at the same time, he reassures me that we will have that conversation, that he isn't just leaving. He gives me the safety I need to give him the space that he needs. So we had to learn how to love each other better and how to fight better by doing that. And it took time to learn that skill within our relationship. We have not gotten it perfect all the time. We have had plenty of conflict. Like I said, we have literally even broken up before because of this exact thing. We didn't know how to fight properly. So luckily, when we got back together, we both were very committed to learning this idea of fighting fairly. And we got a counselor, we saw a therapist, we learned how to do this. We built the skills needed to manage conflict in a great way. And we don't always do it right. We don't always fight right every single time. Now, even though we do have those skills, it's still a work in progress. But it is light years different than what it was back when we broke up. Our conflict management is it's pretty solid. And yeah, it wavers sometimes, but I know that if we have a disagreement or a struggle that we'll work through it. And listen, there's not always a solution that you can come to in conflict. That's kind of what the Gottmans talk a lot about in this book is that people think that there needs to be a solution to a fight, that there needs to be some like end um, result. But in reality, a lot of times there isn't. You are two very different people with very different needs and views and opinions and beliefs. And so that means that the outcome of the fight, there may not be like a direct resolution, a direct solution, but instead there will be a compromise. There will be a understanding. There will be a coming together and figuring out what works for both of you. So that's a skill. That's a skill that you need to develop if you want to have a healthy relationship. And it's a skill that I see so many relationships don't have right off the bat. It's pretty hard to have that right from the start when you are just meeting a person, but it is something that you can build. So learning how to properly and healthily manage conflict, that will be a very um, important thing, an important skill for you to develop if you want to have a better dating experience. So read this book, start to ask yourself how you show up in conflict, why maybe you show up that way. Is it from watching your caregivers, your, your parents model unhealthy behaviors, and that's what you've taken on now as an adult? Is it from past experiences? Maybe you had an ex who was always yelling at you, so you felt like you had to yell back. Whatever it is, take some time, look into how you manage conflict, and then start to figure out what the healthier, more appropriate response could be. And start to build those skills starting now while you're single. So that way when you are dating and when you are in a relationship, conflict can go much more smoothly. There are also some silent killers to relationships and dating that I see all of the time and that I've even experienced in my own relationship. The first one is the idea of mental load, not sharing the mental load within the relationship. So the um, thought processes, the worrying, the paying attention to the little details that are needed to maintain a life in a relationship. If both people are not sharing those uh, as equally as possible, one person will get burnt out, they will build resentment, and it becomes a silent killer in a relationship. If you want to understand more about what I mean when I'm talking about mental load, head to my episode with Zach Watson. He is a mental load coach and content creator who really helps break down what that concept is. But mental load is a big thing that I see in relationships that don't make it for the long haul. So pay attention to that. Learn about that. Another aspect is ignoring each other's bids for connection. When one person, you know, shares like, oh my gosh, here's this video that I think is so funny. And then their partner just ignores them or brushes them off or like doesn't engage with them. That's a silent killer. That makes the other person just feel not important, not valued, even though that's not necessarily what they mean by their response. Maybe they're just busy, they're distracted. 
it does that anyway. So ignoring bids for connection, that's another thing that I see in relationships that aren't healthy or that don't make it for the long haul. It prevents you from having a great dating life. So pay attention when your partner is trying to bid for your connection. And the last silent killer that I see all the time, which plays a bit into mental load, is not sticking to your word. And I'm not talking about sticking to your word in the big things, like being faithful, which is obviously important. I'm talking about sticking to your word in the little things that come up in everyday life. So if you tell your partner that you're going to clean up your closet and then you don't do it for another three weeks, your partner feels as though you've lied to them. Even though it's not over something serious and crazy, you didn't keep your word. You didn't do what you said you were going to do. And over time, those little white lies or those little instances where you break your word, they build up and they cause a lack of trust in a relationship. So pay attention to the little ways in which you make promises and keep them. And the last thing I'll talk about here today is not putting your relationship first. So when you are in a partnership, if you want to have a healthy dating life, if you want to have a healthy relationship, you need to protect your relationship. And I'm not saying that that person will always be your number one priority in life. Sometimes you need to focus on your mental health or maybe the kids are sick, so you need to focus on that first. But I am talking about protecting your relationship as if it's a unit. When you are in a partnership, especially when you are engaged or married or your lifelong partners, that relationship becomes more than just you know somebody you're dating. It becomes somebody that you are one with. It becomes a unit. And you need to protect that unit first and foremost. So that looks like not venting and talking terribly about your partner to other people. It looks like um, not letting other people's opinions come into the relationship and change the way that you behave. You need to put each other first. You need to protect each other first. When you are in a relationship, you need to protect it. So keep issues between you, your partner, and a trusted professional or mentor do not go around talking poorly about your partner. Do not vent to your friends too much. Like, just protect the relationship. Protect the other person. Keep it in the unit. That will set your relationship up for so much more success than the alternative. Okay, so I just listed a ton of different examples for what causes people to have difficult dating and relationship stories. So now let me tell you how to rewrite your crappy dating story. First, stop looking for answers and advice in all the wrong places. Not every single one of your boys or of your girlfriends is actually trained or has the awareness or the wisdom that's needed to give you solid insight and advice on your relationship. Pay attention to which voices you're listening to. Pay attention to who you're going to with your struggles. It should be somebody who has been where you're trying to go, somebody who's wiser than you. It needs to be somebody who actually is healthy within themselves because if you seek advice from people who haven't been where you're trying to go, people who don't understand what you're going through, people who are bitter or hold resentment towards relationship within themselves, you're going to get skewed wisdom, skewed advice. So stop seeking answers and advice and venting to everybody around you. Only go to a few trusted mentors or a therapist or a coach, somebody who knows how to properly share with you the things that you can improve on, the things that you can pay attention to. Next, and I touched on this at the beginning, switch up the type of people that you're going for. Switch up your type. There's a reason that your type hasn't worked up to this point. So try something new. Next, and this is one that I talk about all of the time because I have seen how important it is, is stop going for looks and start paying attention to character more. I am telling you all, our looks fade. Eventually, we all look a little rough, we get a little wrinkly, and in the end, it isn't going to be somebody's appearance that creates a lasting relationship. It is going to be their character. It is going to be whether you two are compatible or not. And compatibility is driven by character. If you are with somebody who is full of integrity, if they hold themselves to a high standard, they treat people right, they stick to their word, that will carry you through in the difficulties that will come with your relationship a million times, like 10 zillion, quadrillion times more than their appearance will, than their good looks will. Good looks fade away. Pay attention to care. On top of that, and this is probably an obvious, but do a deep dive into yourself. What patterns, mindsets, limiting beliefs, and old wounds are holding you back? 
What are you clinging to too tightly? Heal those things first. Take accountability for your own role. Remember, this is meant to empower you, not to blame you. And then see how doing that shifts your dating story and your relationships from there. Overall, what I would just really encourage you to do is start to prepare for love now, even if you are single. Right now, when you are single and you're desperately wanting to meet your person, stop seeing it as this terrible thing that's happening to you and start to embrace it as the time and an opportunity for you to prepare for the love that you're hoping for. Start to identify your own red flags. Start to heal your old wounds, your patterns. Start to figure out how to fight right, how to build healthy conflict, communication. Work on those things now so that way not only will you attract better people into your life, but once you do, you will be able to keep them too. So right now, it's not just that you're single, it's that you are in a preparation phase. Start to prepare now before it's too late. If you are ready to start to learn how to prepare for love now, if you are ready to build a better dating life and relationship story for yourself, then DM me the word capable at Coach Kate DeRocher on TikTok or Instagram, and we'll explore how coaching can work for you. I'm here to guide you through all these things that I just talked about. And I know how to guide you because I made all those mistakes myself and I had to break all of those things within myself too. I had so many patterns and mindsets and wounds that needed to heal before I could build the love that I had been longing for. And I wanna help you do the same thing. So DM me or head to my website, coachkaterosher.com to apply for coaching now. And then I'll set up a call if we're a good fit to work with each other. And we'll go from there. We'll start your healing journey right away. So DM me, contact me on my website, and remember to sign up for the retreat. Use code retreat at coachkaterosher.com to get 10% off. And I will see you this Labor Day weekend for the Wildly Capable Women's Retreat. I cannot wait to connect with you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Please let me know what you thought. Leave a comment on YouTube, a comment on my Instagram, uh, review and rate this podcast on whatever platform you're listening to it through. I would love to hear your feedback and your support really means so much. It really helps this show reach the ears and the eyes of more people. So please rate, like, subscribe, do all the things. Let me know your thoughts. And I will see you here next week on Wildly Capable with Kate.